thank you for uh, tuning in to Take Cross Ministries. We uh, are trying to do a, a series of uh, doctrines and to look at basic things that every Christian should understand and know about. And uh, today's topic is going to be, what is prayer? Uh, if you haven't seen the other episodes of what is the Bible, what is God like, what is the Trinity, what is creation, those you can be found online as well. Uh, the first couple of videos that we did was um, as a result of uh, being in a classroom setting. But the lighting was terrible and the sound quality was terrible. You couldn't hear the people talking. So I decided to um, just put better lighting on and better sound quality. And uh, tell me in the comments how you think about it. Okay, so what is prayer? Well, first of all, there are many reasons for prayer, but here's at least four. Uh, we have to have a dependence. Uh, in the Christian life, our dependence upon God himself as the source of all of our power and all of, all of uh, our efforts is found in him. And so uh, in, uh, we... We need also to learn how to trust. Uh, prayer gives us the ability to trust God because when he answers our prayer to the affirmative, then we feel like, well, we're on track. God knows uh, and is being blessed. He's blessing us. He's being gracious. Uh, when it's to the negative, well, we have to trust God that this is not the right way. This is not the right path. And so we're not depending on ourselves to make all these decisions in life, but we're trusting in God himself uh, to give us the strength that we need. It's a relationship. The give and take of prayer and Bible study and fellowship with the, the other believers in the church, the body, um, and how we deal with the world and, and the conflict that is existing in the world builds that relationship of trust and uh, respect and understanding dependence on Jesus himself. And then finally, uh, one of the topics I, I think should be uh, that we get to play a part in the story. The story is really all about Jesus. It's about his death, his resurrection, and uh, his ascension, his empowering the, the believers with the Holy Spirit, how the, the disciples went out and, and evangelized the world and how God has put that same spirit in you and I and we're being changed. We're part of the story. Uh, there's something that exciting and vibrant about a Christian who really believes uh, what Christ is doing. The effectiveness of prayer. Well, let's look at Luke chapter 11. 9 and 10, he says, And I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who receives, and the one who seeks, finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. Now that is a remarkable passage. Do you believe that? Is this literally true? We can just ask whatever we want, and it will be given to us? Yes and no you got to read this passage in context. And the context is in the kingdom of God, that Jesus himself is in control and he's establishing his kingdom and we are put on earth to receive his purpose and his will. And in obedience as Christians, as we follow him, we can ask whatever that we want and he'll give it to us. But it's to further the kingdom of God. Now, if it's not going to further the kingdom of God, you can ask for a Lamborghini and you're not going to get it. <laughs> this is a passage that the, the health and wealth crowd, uh, uh, so many of them on TBN, uh, some of those false prophets like uh, Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes and uh, a bunch of others, uh, they all take passages like this and just give you this this false belief that you're just going to be able to pray and if you have enough faith you're just going to receive anything you want you can even ask for a jet airplane uh who was that did that uh i think it was creefro dollar 
or or uh, one of them other nuts. But that's not the case. God is not concerned about you you getting wealthy. You're already wealthy. You have Christ, and you have the abundance and the resources of the kingdom of God at your disposal. And and so God knows your needs, and He's not going to let you uh, just just disappear on this earth with hunger. I mean, uh, you know, you might not be eating steak every day, but you're not going to starve. God's going to take care of you. Uh, What's the passage? He says, uh, consider the uh, sparrows, that God knows how they are arrayed, and that that, that uh, he knows, uh, he cares so much more about you than he does the, the, the birds in the air. And so he's going to take care of you. And so just work, know that prayer is very effective. Um, look at this in James 4. He says, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? <laughs> just think of that. Uh, is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? The emotions uh, uh, are just... Uh, inflame our desires, our wants, our flesh is evil. It, it wants things that it cannot have. And uh, that's why you see our church is just falling apart with split after split. Uh, you desire and you do not have, so you murder. Murder. You might think, are they really killing people? Well, you know, remember Jesus said if you have hatred in your heart that you've committed murder. It's the same thing. If you look at a woman with lust in your eyes, you've committed adultery. So there's a higher standard for the Christian. That So you're not supposed to be angry with your brother. Don't let the sun uh, come down on your, uh, your anger. Uh, so before the sun goes down, you're supposed to get right with your brother and not harbor that anger in your heart. He says, you desire and you do not have, so you murder, you covet, and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. And you do not have because you do not ask. James also says, you you have not for you ask not. We are so reluctant to pray. And I get it, I understand. It's because uh, we're in a room by ourselves and we're talking to, there's nobody here. But there is somebody here. That God's here. Where we're two or more gathered, God is there with you, is what the Scripture says. And, and so he says for you to go into your closet and pray. And so he's there. Well, who's there? Well, you're there. Jesus is there. And Jesus is talking to the Father for you. So there's always two or more, even when you're by yourself. And so... Uh, uh, the Lord is just good. So just keep praying. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Here's an example of Moses and his prayer and the effectiveness. He prayed this prayer. This comes directly out of Exodus 32, 12. He says, Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. He's talking to God. He said, God, just turn from your anger. And and God has promised to just destroy uh, all these people because they, they had sinned before God. Well, here's the response. Look what he says. And the Lord relented and the disaster that had spoken of bringing on his people. So Moses prayed. God listened. And God re- turned away from his anger. Don't you know that God is just angry with the United States? He's angry with people in your own family and my family. He's angry with Congress and the Senate. He's angry with the nations that are beating those war drums all around the world. You know that he's angry. And it's up to us to pray, to intercede, to ask God that he would find mercy, to find another way rather than destroying nations or families or people, that he would find a way by our prayers. He is 
motivated to reach out and to touch people. He, he, we don't do anything to get saved. Only God saves people. And God can give the gift of faith to anybody you're praying for. Why don't you pray for them and see what God will do to change hearts? The effectiveness of prayer. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's effective to, to get keep us clean, to keep us spiritually. Uh, pure and holy and that's why James tells us uh, that we should be in uh, continuous constant prayer and an attitude of prayer at all times and so that everything that we do and say and think of and look at and and touch and behold and 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 a part of should be saturated in our prayer so that that our path will be lightened we'll be able to see uh, a path to go forward. But here's the problem. The unholy, those who uh, don't know God, those who uh, uh, are, uh, those who do know God, but are, are just living in sin. Uh, you, you don't have any right to approach God. If you have sinned, you need to confess your sins and restore that relationship. You don't lose your salvation because you sin. All Christians fall into sin. But you do lose the relationship. David said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. That's what he's talking about. Uh, he, He had been in sin. He sinned with Bathsheba. And now all of a sudden he's confessing that sin. And he's asking God to restore the joy. Because he remembered the good times, walking with God and and being with God and beholding the blessings of God. Just everywhere that he went, God blessed David. 1 Timothy 2, 5, he says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. This is the effectiveness of prayer. That if we're going to do anything, we have to know how to pray. And we pray to the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. That's how we pray. And so I hear people saying things like, uh, you know, I command you to do this or that, or uh, Father, I command you to do You, you don't command anybody. Uh, you're... <laughs> You're, if you're a Christian, you're just a, a child of God. You don't have the ability to command. You have the ability to be obedient to the Word of God. Uh, we don't uh, bind Satan. We don't uh, command Jesus. Uh, the effectiveness of prayer is simply that Jesus is our mediator to the Father. In John fourteen six, he says, Jesus said to him, I am the way the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Uh, That comes from 16.23. And again, that's one of those verses that the name it and claim it crowd tried to manipulate. But uh, this again is in context. If you go and look at it, it, it is talking about working within the, the parameters of the kingdom of God to fulfilling the wishes and the desires and the, uh, uh, the will of God. In 1 John five thirteen through 15, he says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. And again, this is to bring about the, the very will of God to get it accomplished. What is God's will? Well, it's to go into uh, Jerusalem, Samaria, and the outer parts of the, of the world. 
Um, your Jerusalem is wherever you live. Your Samaria is the outer areas of where you live. And then going the rest of the world, like places like Kenya and India. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. It's an attitude. When we ask, we're, we're asking for things that we know that God already wants. And so when we ask, we just ask, Lord, provide. Uh, because we don't have the ability. We don't have the strength. It is to your glory that this be done. And because it is to your glory, he's not going to refuse it. Because it's Jesus' glory, he's not going to refuse it at all. Our attitude in prayer is this. He says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So we're just assured of this hope. This hope is that God wants his, his gospel spread everywhere. He wants our neighbors to know Jesus. He wants our family members to know Jesus. And so we, we are assured of that, and we hope for it, and we pray for it. And although we may not see it now, we have a conviction that, that it will take place. And so it's an attitude. Attitude is very important in Christian faith. When his will is not clear, this is important because some, a lot of times God's will is not clear. And we'll ask for all kinds of things, but his will is not clear. And you hear people talking about his perfect will, his permissive will, his uh, uh, subjective will. There's all kinds of uh, ways to uh, look at the will of God. But in John 15, 7, he says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. These are important promises. Very important. And he keeps saying it in different places, in different ways, and the same message is just ask. God will provide. Okay, and Mark... 1124 he says therefore i tell you whatever you ask in prayer believe you have received it and it will be yours again that's the gospel uh in psalm 66 18 it says it this way if i had cherished iniquity in my heart the lord will not have listened so if your prayer life's not working here's the first place to start do you have iniquity in your heart? The Bible tells us that the heart of man is deceitful above all. <laughs> we deceive ourselves sometimes. We deceive ourselves and, and tell ourselves there's no sin there, and yet there is sin. And when we say that, that there is no sin, we make God a liar. And God's not a liar. He, he knows when there's sin in your heart. And when you have that sin and you reside in that sin, he will not listen to your prayers. It's just that you ever pray and your uh, prayers go up and hit the ceiling and come back down. I like, you know, nobody's listening. Nobody, nobody's hearing me. Uh, we desire desperately to be heard, but we don't desire to listen. And so that's the problem with the heart. And the heart has to be cleansed. And the only one that can do that is, is Jesus himself. Ask him to cleanse your heart, and he'll hear your prayers. This comes from 1 Peter 3.12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. You don't want to be in God's face. We even have that 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 uh, metaphor in our our own English language. Uh, when someone gets in your face, it means that they're, they're being aggressive towards you. Well, if you get in the face of the Lord uh, and you're doing evil, you, you're in a bad situation. You don't want to be there. Uh, we need to make sure that our hearts are righteous and they get to where they are. So prayer is a very powerful thing. And uh, just continue to read your Bible. Uh, and uh, if you need more help with this, check the links below 
for other areas of interest that you might enjoy. If you enjoyed this content, would you please consider liking and sharing uh, and click the bell for notifications so that you'll know when new content's put in. God bless you all. God keep you until we meet again.